Well, good morning to all. It's kind of a just yucky, dreary day. There is nothing better to do for any of us. So why not open up our Bible and uh, do a little bit of Bible study and the book of Exodus. I would like to pray at the beginning. Heavenly Father, you come into the midst of our days with your wisdom and your guidance and today we ask that you would guide our thoughts as from your holy book in your name amen so today we resume with the plagues and in the midst of a kind of a plague pandemic so, uh, things are intensifying here in the book of exodus for us we start off in chapter 9 with the fifth plague. Uh, Moses was, uh, God, God speaks to Moses at the very beginning. And Pharaoh asked again to let his people go. If not, if you refuse, uh, God says, then I will send another pestilence. And will be the horses, the donkeys, camels, the herds, and the flocks. All will be affected, except nothing will die of that that belongs to the Israelites. Um, Moses is told this will take place tomorrow. And indeed it does. And uh, Pharaoh about the damage that is done in the land and his people are affected the plague has in, uh, inflicted the animals of the Egyptians but he finds out that not even one of the livestock of the Israelites is but again as the pattern has it uh, the heart of Pharaoh is hardened and he let the people go so now the sixth plague is about to happen uh, where Moses and Aaron are instructed to take a handful of soot from the kiln and throw it in the air and that brings about some festering on the human beings and also on the animals throughout the whole land of Egypt. Magicians could stand before Moses because of the boils and now they are afflicted as well as the Egyptians. And verse 12 tells us that God again hardens the heart of Pharaoh. He would not listen to them just like the Lord explained it to Moses. So now again uh, the next morning is to rise up early in the morning and present himself to Pharaoh and again ask Pharaoh to let the people go and if not God will send all his blood upon the Pharaoh himself and upon the people and now just in case Pharaoh is wondering why didn't God strike them all dead yet, God reveals in, chapter, in verse 16 that here is the reason why they're still living, to show you my power and to make sound through all the earth. So there is a lesson in all of that that is happening to Pharaoh and the Egyptians that would see the power of God the, that they would revere his name so the following day the heaviest of, of hails is sent something that no one had ever seen and with it thunder and fire flashing continual devastates the entire land in verse 26, only in the land of Goshen where the Israelites were, there was no hail and no damage whatsoever. Now, it's serious and Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron and he tells them, this time 
I have sinned. We have a leader here. I have sinned. God is in the right. And I and my people are in the wrong. Asks Moses, please pray that this would all end. And then I will let you go. You don't need to stay any longer. And so Moses believes and uh, and hail and the thundering and the fire ends. But predictably so in 34 we read when Pharaoh's and the thunder had ceased again he sins and he hardens his heart uh, both he and his officials and again he goes back on his word and the Israelites go out so now we enter chapter 10 and we are about to take off with the the eighth plague which are the locusts and again god says to moses go to harden his heart and so moses and aaron talk to pharaoh and uh, they ask well how long will you refuse to humble yourself before god you know if you don't do it god will will send locusts into your country tomorrow and if you thought that was enough damage uh, believe us because uh, the locusts will not anything uneaten anything that may have been left over from the hail it will be damaged now and so again Pharaoh doesn't listen, and now the locusts are sent on the wind. And um, um, now Moses, before that with Pharaoh, and he was kind of willing to let the people go, but he was asking at this time, well, who, who will go? Who will go to worship? Uh, we will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and daughters, with our flocks and herds. All of us will go. But Pharaoh doesn't like the idea. He says, you probably have something bad in mind. I don't I will let only your men go to worship. And when... Um, only gives that that kind of... A, a word that only men are supposed to go that's when the locusts are sent upon the the earth and everything every blade of grass devastated and so again um fair meaning now in verse 16 he asks Aaron to come and he is saying i have sinned against the lord i have sinned against the lord and against you forgive my sins the tune is starting a little bit forgive my sin this once and pray to the lord that this pestilence that the locusts will leave and so again moses prays the locusts leave the lord hardens pharaoh's heart and again he willing to let the Israelites go so now at the end of chapter 10 we come to and here God says to Moses to stretch out his hand toward the heaven so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt darkness that that everyone will feel and this darkness will be so dense that the Israelites will not be able to see anything for three days. The darkness comes to uh, the Egyptians, but the Israelites, where they live in the land of the ocean, they're able to see light, so their life is uninterrupted. 
So in, in the midst of this darkness that lasts for three days, Pharaoh again calls, as you know, you go, you worship the Lord, only your flocks and your herds will me, remain behind. Even your children can go, your men can go, all of you can go. But Moses says, well, we're going to sacrifice. We need sacrifices and burnt offerings. So our livestock, all because we will have to choose from our livestock a sacrifice to the Lord. At this point, God hardens Pharaoh's heart, unwilling to let them go. So Pharaoh is very angry, and now he finishes off at this chapter with the word, Get away from me. Take care that you do not see my face again. And here is a threat, for on the day you see my face, you shall die. And Moses ends this chapter with the words, just as you say, I will never see your face again. In these two chapters that we were reading, we saw the intensifying of the plagues as we have come now to the ninth plague. And we are seeing the increasing rage of Pharaoh toward Moses and Aaron, toward God. And that is making me think about our time and our own situation, the increasing anxiety of the people around the world, uh, us as well, as we hear words of uh, the illness spreading all around the earth here in the United States. So where is uh, God's guidance for us at this time? I believe it is like Moses and Aaron to keep praying, to keep being in contact with God, trusting that He indeed has the benefit and the wellness of all of us uh, in His hands. If we would just be patient, if we would just turn to Him, return to Him, which is actually the theme of Lent, Return to the Lord your God. Uh, be him as he is faithful to you. Next time we will chapter 11 and we will read about the plague that shook the land of Egypt and we will try to see who is in that plague for our May God bless your day as you go into it may he bless your resting and your working and may you keep may he keep you safe you take care my friends